Yeah. All right, what's up, you guys? So today we're here at the Joshua Jamal studio. These are some of like my favorite shorts that have come out on the market recently, and I just want to give you guys a bit more like context into like how a product is actually developed instead of just like for you guys in regular like, pickup style videos. So this is kind of like borderline vlog, borderline product review, but just like fully encompassing into a designer's world. So we're just gonna ask the homies here a few questions, see like the design process, what some of the inspo was looking like. And you know what you guys forgot? To like the damn video. The likes have been getting low cause y'all been lazy bruh. So if I don't see a thou likes on the vid, it's up, it's up for you guys, okay? Back to the video. For these shorts and also no, what they're gonna I mean, be producing like in the size. future. But no, yeah, this is like some of the design that I appreciate the most, like things with sure. actual storyline and referencing and integrity, you know? So that's what we're gonna crack into. I have a yeah, pair of size medium that. shorts that I picked up last week, but I was trying to Again, debate between the large and the medium. So we're actually oh, whipping up a few more shorts Would this week so we could get a bit more of the process right this week. So this is fully lined up, right? Yeah. And if you look on this side here, Still getting a bit of excess. Show you, my guy. Alrighty. Alright, you guys. So here we are with the designer and the partner, as you would say. I guess. Yes, sir. I'm gonna crack into like a bit of like the design and like inspiration behind the brand. So we're gonna let my boy take it away real quick. Alrighty. So my name is Joshua Wilson. I'm born and raised in Oceanside, California, out here in Montreal right now. This is uh, we're sewing up the neighborhood shorts for my brand Joshua Jamal and kind of take you through the process of how we create these pieces from start to finish. We'll kind of show you the process of the shorts that are getting made right now and that's about it. Yeah. Um, what, what was some of the inspiration behind like upcycling because like obviously that's uh that's something that a lot of brands like to focus on now but like what was your focus with approaching upcycling and what makes it different from the standard uh reference of the original pan into the shorts that you're making now. Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Well, upcycling kind of started like when I was, uh, kind of when I started learning how to sew with my great-grandmother. Back in uh, 2016, 2017, my great-grandmother used to go to the thrift stores and rework things into her own pieces, and I had a concept for like a reworked t-shirt at the time, mm -hmm. and she helped me like bust out the pattern out of like newspaper and shit, and like that's when I made my first rework, and that kind of sparked the started reworking but to backtrack a little bit i was into like vintage and like picking for i was picking for a few brands out of vancouver and just sourcing vintage and just through my love of vintage and love of just aged garments i wanted to bring that into my design process and keep that sustainable process and uh yeah but for this short specifically it was uh inspired by basically just me trying to tell stories and bring my vision to life through my culture and my the life I lived growing up in Southern California mm -hmm. and in a Jamaican military household. Mm -hmm. And this short specifically is the neighborhood short, which brings reference to the neighborhood I grew up in, Oceanside, California, which is the home of like one of the biggest Marine Corps bases in the world, uh, Camp Pendleton, where my dad served in the Marine Corps and my uncles and my cousins and stuff all were served in the Marine Corps. And this is the exact camo they wore, the woodland camo from the 80s to early 2000s. So I sourced all of these camos uh, um, for this project, for this uh, release for the neighborhood short. But it's the silhouette referencing comes from my city as well with a lot of uh, Chicano cholos going up in Oceanside, Southern, Southern California. My high school had tons of that cholo influence with the, you know, wearing oversized, not just cholos, but just like, the gang hood, yeah. bat hip hop background that yeah. I grew up with, just like like the larger Dicky shorts. And yeah, like things in their life. everyone wearing four XL as like yeah. a as their regular size, you know. Yeah. So yeah. bringing that, but like hybriding it with the military concept and making the neighborhood short. And neighborhood short is also like a concept that I'm gonna keep using, like mm -hmm. using the silhouette, mm -hmm. but like to dive into different neighborhoods if you get me. Yeah. So like right now we're just focusing on one right now, which I kind of broke into with the military cholo experience, but another one may be a little influence from like where my dad's from, like in the Wyoming with mm -hmm. the Western cowboy experience. We okay. may bring in some denim, you know, yeah. but keep the same neighborhood silhouette. Okay. But, but then yeah. bring it to a different neighborhood. Exactly. Okay. So neighborhood is just kind of, yeah. 
just to give it that longevity yeah. to use the silhouette. Yeah. But yeah. So like, in terms of where you want to take the brand, you're, you're focusing heavily in upcycling, of course, and like. Yeah. Um, for sure. Do you feel like? that's like a main ethos of the brand like that's that's gonna be carried throughout the brand for forever and it's always gonna be yeah i'm always gonna have that vintage yeah and reworking upcycling Mm -hmm. ethos for the brand just Mm -hmm. because that's what i believe in Mm -hmm. that's what i it's the most sustainable for sure yeah sustainable there's enough stuff out there yeah and i love the just going out and finding things or just like hunting down where to find all these camos like it was it's not easy just to find for sure this era of woodland camo but i was able to hunt it down and find a consistent you know and that was your like your roots are in vintage right too like you were you were for like sure. sourcing for other vintage i was companies sourcing for other day. vintage companies like yeah. Efferson frank back in vancouver yeah. um sources for them in la vancouver and that's about just on the west coast mm-hmm. mainly mm-hmm. i haven't done too much sourcing on the east coast until mm-hmm. recently mm-hmm. but yeah just going to rag houses you know, finding multiple different things. And where I grew up, there was tons of surpluses because mm. obviously we're a military town. So I grew up with like probably eight different surpluses. And it's also a dying thing right now because, um, you know, with COVID and stuff, a lot of those small surpluses and business owners kind of died out. Yeah. yeah, it's just something I'm trying to bring to life. So like, we may not be able to create this a year from now, this exact one, but it's true. Yeah, it's you're getting out where you can for now and then for sure. see what can be produced down the line, right? So it also helps like, Reworking gives me a different creative process with designing. Mm-hmm. It helps challenge me a little differently. Because every every time you're approaching the garment, it's going to be a bit different, right? Exactly. Like, I and feel like, like that's something that you cross every time you're like working on every one of the shorts. Like I feel like from the last week that I was here to this one, like you're approaching every garment in a different way because they're not going to be the exact same way. Yeah, for sure. Right? Even even if the pattern is the same, you're going to have to yeah. adapt it depending on the fabric or like how that. Because all of them were like. It worn differently like i said yeah. like they're all worn by military people yeah. or like not Even, worn. like see like here like it's like these are the different like shades you would you were explaining to me yeah, yeah 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 so like this is actually two different materials technically because this is the rip stop and then this is a non rip stop so like back in the day obviously the rip stop came afterwards and that's just it's a more breathable cotton and obviously these are made for combat so we need something more breathable especially when you're doing combat in the desert in like California, you know, Texas. Like Texas and California are one of the main Marine Corps states in the United States. So like, yeah, but I wanted to use both just to give you each person the uniqueness also. That's why I like upcycling too, because yeah. every person gets the same concept, but in the, they get their own unique piece. For sure. Because everyone's trying to have something different and this is the way you get the same piece mm-hmm. and you can support the brand and you know, I but think that was something different. That was another thing that I appreciated <laughs> the last time we were talking about the shorts. Was like I think you were talking about how like some brands when they approach upcycling, it's kind of like it could come across as like a like a DIY like in your own basement type of approach. But like with you guys, with your design process, it's very much like you guys know what you want out of the end product, and like sure. the finishings are executed as if it was like in a design house. You know, exactly. Like, like uh, literally like something out of like a Parisian design house, sure. you know? And like, I feel like that's something that might go over people's head. Like when they just see a pair of shorts, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. vintage, you're like, oh, why would I pay X amount of dollars like yeah. that? I but like, like, it goes into like, I feel like it's so much worth it when I when you see all of this, you know? Like that's why I wanted to like bring some context to it. And like, For sure. when you get into like branding and packaging and like, For sure. This guy's touching every single short, you know, like it's not getting pumped yeah. out through some massive factory, you know? Yeah, all these pants, you know, I get them all from obviously a pant. Mm-hmm. I gotta deconstruct every single pant by hand. Mm-hmm. We gotta iron it, clean it, wash it, you know, the whole process. Mm-hmm. Cut it to the pattern, you know? We always have difficulties because you have to see how you're gonna fit the pattern and adjust things with the pant you have. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just bring it to life in the also having industry standards, like I said, like working in the industry since for the past, you know, seven to eight years, Mm -hmm. you get to see different brands and the quality and how things are supposed to be constructed and how things are, how people take shortcuts and I just don't want to take shortcuts. And that's why I'm kind of just focused on this one product right now, just to not rush anything. For sure. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people get caught in like, oh, the what's next or whatever, but you got a good thing going right now, like like walking on that and then. 
obviously the yeah, next obviously. the next story will come eventually right yeah what point of the process are we in right now so that people can kind of understand what so right now going. everything has been patterned so this is everything has been deconstructed cut washed and uh this is the pattern piece this is a the, the base mm. and basically this is a construction part so just putting the pieces together and after that, we do a little quality control, and then we wash the garments again, mm -hmm. and obviously tag the pieces. Mm -hmm. These are uh, real military tags. These are what, if you were in the Marine Corps, this would have your name on it, and your, this would be the badge that would be on the back of your pants and your fatigues. So I wanted to bring that authenticness to my garment. Mm -hmm. Kind of make it like, when you're wearing it, people don't really see it, but then when they see it, they see it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and also with the, yeah. This is the package. Yeah, yeah, it's a little dust bag. Yeah. And this is a military, this is what the Marine Corps, all military actually uses for their laundry bags. Yeah. And I thought I'd keep that sustainable aspect in the packaging. Sure. And also give you a little something for like this piece specifically. And he's just doing some of the finishings on the shore then, huh? Right now he's uh, doing a little deconstructing, I see. Yeah, yeah, just making sure it's right. Yeah, making sure it's solid, but. Yeah, like we said, trying to keep everything like industry standard. Um, you know, as someone who makes clothes myself, I just want to make sure that it's quality over quantity and really taking that time to get the best out of every piece we make. Yeah, so right now I'm just kind of going over a spot to make sure it's 100%. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole process of these beautiful shorts. I'm like really excited to like bring you guys more into like studios like this and like showing that process of what goes into actually like constructing a garment. Cause I feel like a lot of people get desensitized to like me just showing clothes all the time. They don't actually understand what goes into like making the clothes and like how much hours goes into like conceptualizing these things and constructing these things and uh, bringing this story to life, you know? So really grateful for Josh bringing us into the studio today. Thanks for coming out, I'm here, you know, like, seeing the process, yeah. seeing the work. Yeah. So I guess you can let the people know where where to find you and like what you got in store. And, like, so you can find the brand at Joshua Jamal, buy Joshua Jamal on Instagram. JoshuaJamal.com is a website. And what to look out for is just me just telling this, my story through clothes and just more of that like realness. So translating real story, real life. Cause like, I feel like a lot of people and a lot of brands, they reference the culture, but they ain't live in the culture. And I really lived that. And I'm trying to bring that to life with my, with Joshua Jamal, you know? So yeah, pieces. Yeah, we got some more stuff fall, winter. Just stay patient, mm. it'll come. Thank you. Us, bro. For sure. Appreciate Thank you. Sir. What's up, you guys? So we're back in the studio after that brief little vlog-ish style clip. Now, I really hope that you guys appreciate those style of videos because they are kind of ones that I've always tended to enjoy. Forgot to put on my ring. We are going to crack into the actual product itself now that we had that little segment where we we're getting to know the designer and understand a bit of the ins and outs of the design process. I feel like it was cool to make this video because I feel like a lot of the time, there's a lot of desensitizing when I just show you guys clothes after clothes after clothes. A lot of people tend to forget that on the other end of things, there's the consumer and there's also the producer. And the producer is just as important as the consumer because without the clothes, no one's buying nothing. You know what I mean? So uh, I just really appreciated talking to Josh about his process and having a person that actually cares about the story and craft behind what they're making was really important for me to showcase on this channel and give you guys a bit of insight behind the creators that are out in the world that I really appreciate. And I'm gonna do it more often with different uh, designers, uh, creatives, people that do music, et cetera, because it's something that I value and I feel like you guys would as well. So we're gonna crack into this piece right here. This is that dust bag that he was talking about. Open that up. But this is gonna be sick. I'm definitely gonna be using this for like uh, like laundry bags um, when I go travel, etc. Because that's really clutch. You can put everything in one place. I'm definitely gonna be using that. And here we have the shorts. So these, of course, to 
the average person would probably feel like they're just a regular pair of camo shorts, but they are just so much more than that. The cut is very meticulous. Like the darting really adds to the shape of the knee, the wide cut, the fray at the bottom of leg, even uh, what he was detailing on the inside of how the garment is constructed. Like all the lines are just super, super clean. Everything is completely dissembled and reassembled. It's not just a pair of... <laughs> camo shirts that he just cut and he's like here you go like feed the streets it's actually a whole constructed garment you know what i mean so joshua demal on the back branding something that i really like about the baggy shorts that people are tending to appreciate these days me included uh i've been getting creative with the styling and something that i've been liking to do is like counterbalancing i've talked about that plenty on the channel where you have like kind of a larger upper or like a more like bulky upper like a baggy hoodie etc and you kind of have some baggy shorts but then you wear like long boots at the end kind of weird makes it for a weird silhouette but it definitely works depends on how you play around with it as well another thing that i've been trying that you guys could probably be interested in is putting shorts over pants double bag Baggy, I think it looks best obviously, but you can also play with the proportions as well. If you want to put like um, compression pants, like Lululemon pants, or if you wanted to do just like a double baggy on baggy situation to have just that added sense of layering, it's really cool. I've been doing it a ton and I find a lot of people are enjoying that in getting creative with styling. So, but yeah, man, these look amazing. I'm super excited to wear them. Um, obviously we're in the fall season. So that second iteration of me telling you what, what I would do with the styling is probably more useful for how you would wear these in fall winter. But besides that, a great piece to add to your wardrobe nonetheless that you could appreciate a bit more as is in the spring summer months. But like I said, with the layer, you could enjoy it in fall winter. And I just wanted to give a quick highlight to Joshua Jamal. If you guys are looking forward to any um, designer specific highlights where I'd be able to like go into a studio and really give you some insight in their process, I will definitely do that. I've done it with Ray before uh, a bit, like when I went to his studio and asked him a few questions, but stuff like that I'm always curious on. So in the future, I will definitely be doing more of them as I start to brainstorm on who would be perfect for that. All that to say, I really appreciate you guys stopping by the channel once again. Definitely check out Joshua Jamal. Let me know how you guys feel about the shorts and just how he is as a designer and what you could expect from that brand in the future and what I should be expecting from other brands as well. You guys could just always spam the comments down below. I always like knowing what new is on the market and yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. Make sure to like if you haven't already and subscribe if you're new. Follow boy on Instagram, G-O-T-S-W-E-I-G-E is where you can keep up to date with me more frequently. I post fit pics, this and that. So that's what you can check out on there. I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Also follow boy on TikTok, S-W-E-I-G-E, Swage. Trying to get that popping. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.